Hello everyone, my name is Jason Hines and I am a Senior Solutions Architect at AWS. In this demo, I will walk you through how you can build a custom AWS Service Blueprint in Amazon Data Zone by bringing together existing data, specifically in Redshift. Let's see all the things we're going to cover. First, we'll go through a quick introduction to Amazon Data Zone and the custom AWS Service Blueprint. Then we will introduce a sample end-to-end -end customer workflow that covers the core functionalities of the custom AWS Service Blueprint. Finally, we'll take you through a step-by-step -step process of how you can implement this workflow in Amazon Data Zone yourself. So let's get started. Amazon Data Zone is an AWS service that allows you to catalog, discover, share, govern, and analyze data across organizational boundaries. If you are not already familiar with DataZone, please visit our first Getting Started video for more context. It will be linked in the video description. Now let's quickly go over the infrastructure that powers DataZone. Inside of a DataZone domain, you can create projects. These projects are then used as ownership entities within DataZone. When you create a project, you are creating a logical container to add members. But for these members to work with data and analytic tools, they need storage, tools, and necessary IAM permissions deployed. Those deployments are managed using blueprints and environments. Data zone blueprints define what AWS tools and services are provisioned to be used within the data zone environment. Out of the box, data zone has a few default blueprints ready to use. These include default data lake, default data warehouse, and default SageMaker, with more on the way. Data Zone administrators can use the console to enable or disable these blueprints in each associate account as they see fit. To give more flexibility for you to bring your resources, we are introducing the custom AWS Blueprint. This provides a container for you to define what resources should be used by Amazon Data Zone. Let's dive in. The custom AWS Service Blueprint does not provision any resources. Unlike other default blueprints, instead, customers can configure their AWS IAM role to integrate their existing AWS resources within DataZone. Additionally, customers can configure action links, which provides federated access to any AWS resources like Amazon S3 buckets, AWS Glue ETL jobs, etc., such as Redshift 2 as well, using the AWS IAM role configured by the customer. Let's explore a sample custom AWS Service Blueprint workflow we will implement using DataZone. In this scenario, we will have two AWS accounts, one owned by the marketing team and one owned by the sales team. The marketing team already have a DataZone domain in their account with the default data warehouse environment set up. Now the marketing team wants to onboard the sales team's AWS account to their domain to access data in their Redshift database. But the sales team has sensitive resources with IAM permissions already defined. So they want to use a bring your own role setup, meaning custom IAM roles, instead of the data zone defaults. The marketing team would also like to use an existing IAM role to consume this data, as well as set up custom action links to Redshift Query Editor in their environment so they can run queries across the AWS Glue data catalog, Redshift tables, and data shares created by DataZone. The sales team would like to publish their own data, while the marketing team would like to subscribe to, to data from the other accounts. The end result will be using DataZone to automate the Redshift data shares, allowing the marketing team to consume the data via their custom IAM role in Redshift Query Editor. First, we're going to go into our marketing account, which has DataZone enabled in it. From here, we're going to request association with our sales domain, including all of the RAM permissions. And now that account, once I hit refresh, will show in a requested state. Now we'll go over to our sales account and view the requested association. Here 
here we have an association that came in and we are going to go ahead and accept the new permissions. Once that's complete, we're going to go into our domain and we are going to enable, which I already enabled here, our custom AWS service. From here, we're going to create an environment, call it sales data warehouse environment. And we're going to use an existing project of sales that our data zone domain admin had already created for us. For the environment role, we are going to use an existing role. So bring your own role and in region USD SWAN and click on create environment. Now we get to go into our environment and hit create a data source. This is where we're going to bring in our data from our Redshift cluster. So we're going to call this sales data source. It's Redshift and it's using a serverless instance. For the secret, we will select the secret that's already been created for us. And we will use the sales work group. For the database, we're using the defaults of dev and public. For the manage access role, we have created a an access role that has the appropriate permissions to manage our Redshift instances within this environment and click on add. Now our environment has been created as well as our data source. Now we can go over to the marketing side. Back on our marketing side, we can go into our blueprints and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to enable our custom blueprint custom service. And then from there, we will go into a custom AWS service and we are going to create an environment for marketing. So we will call this one marketing DW environment. We will use the existing project that has been created specifically for marketing that already has our consumers as members. For the environment role, we will use our marketing redshift role. We Again, we're bringing our own role here and we will select USD one for our region and click on create environment. Now that the environment has been created, we can go into our environment and we will select a subscription target. We could also click on here on consume data. Either one works. Go ahead and click on add subscription targets. And we are going to add our, we'll call it marketing sub target. This is going to allow us to actually consume. Once we subscribe to our data assets, it will bring them into this subscription target environment. We have a secret that's been defined and we will use our marketing work group, which already has existing tables in there. We're going to create a data share uh, in data zone with this instance. Our database is dev and the schema of public, the defaults again. For the manage access role, we have created a manage access role that has appropriate permissions to manage Redshift in this environment. For the database role, we created a database role called Redshift Marketing Redshift role that has the appropriate permissions already and, and tables already defined for it inside of Redshift. And we're going to click on add here. Now that our environment has been created and our subscription target has been defined, we also want to create a custom link that's going to allow our consumers in marketing to be able to directly deep link into the query editor to consume their assets. So we're going to call this, we've copied over the URL for the query editor version two, and we're going to call this SQL query editor. That is added a deep link. Now in the data zone UI, we can go in and look at our data source and we're going to go ahead and run the data source to pull our asset into inventory. Once that's been completed, we have a new asset that's been added called customers underscore RS. We will go ahead and we're going to accept the defaults on the metadata generation. I'm going to make one change here to the actual name. And we will go ahead and publish our asset so it can be consumed by marketing now. Now in our marketing project, we're logged in as a different user. We're going to go ahead and search for customer and we're going to subscribe to our data set.
back in our sales project, we have a request for subscription. We're going to go ahead and approve that. And this will start the grant process for marketing to gain access to our customers table via a Redshift data share. In our marketing project, the subscription is being added to the customer's table via data share. So it'll take about three to four minutes. Uh, in the meantime, though, we can see that it is actually adding it to the environment that we had created via our custom AWS service blueprint. Now that the access has been granted, we can go in and consume our data using our custom deep link. This will actually federate us in as the role that we brought into the environment. Now that we're in our query editor, we're going to go ahead and connect to our marketing work group via federated user to the dev database. Now that we've connected, we can run our query that's going to go across our table that's sitting in our Redshift cluster, as well as the data share that's coming over from sales, as well as some tables that are in our Glutata catalog on the marketing side. So we've been able to successfully query using DataZone as the governance tool to create our data shares, as well as being able to bring our own roles using the custom AWS service as a part of DataZone. Thank you for your time.